So let's kind of just start going down the list here. And I'm going to go down the bottom of here because these are really interesting, useful brushes you're going to probably use a bit. So instead of the clay brush, let's use clay buildup. And you're going to notice the first thing is that they put a brush alpha in there. And we'll get into that uh, a bit in the future. But basically, you're just kind of using this clay buildup. And it kind of gives you a more precise buildup. So it's it behaves like the clay brush, as in you can build features next to each other. But it also gives a nice, you know, kind of traditional clay build up feel to it. You can kind of build up a surface very quickly and precisely with clay buildups. That's a that's a really fun good one to use. Of course the standard brush we've already talked about you're gonna to want to hold down alt and start carving in. Another uh, menu that you can use a lot uh, I'll tap S and make my brush size really big or really small. If you hit your if you hold down your space bar, you'll see you get a lot bigger menu in here. So here you can tr control the focal shift and your Z intensity all right here and the RGB intensity, which we'll get to in a bit. You can change it from Z to Z sub. Uh, you can do poly painting in here. You can go into transpose, or I should say the new widget that's in Z, ZBrush Core. A lot of things you can do in, in this menu. You can also right click and you can gain access to that menu as well. So right click or space bar. Um, or you can go up here to these top menu area up here. Continuing to move down the line here, we got our Damien standard. That's damn standard right there. And this, you're going to see it has a little pinpoint alpha in here, and that's going to allow you to kind of carve in very precise shapes as well. And you can hold down Alt, and that'll kind of pull up to a flat surface. So you can use this. Uh, let's see if we can get a good thing going on here. So I'm going to hold down Alt. I'm not going to hold down Alt. I'm going to dig in and then hold down Alt to kind of build up uh, a sharp lip here and of course with any of these you can go to your stroke and lazy mouse is turned on by default at a lazy radius of one if you want to crank that up feel free to do so you can build these out you can go into your clay brush now and just kind of softly uh, build up to the surface here and then you can go back in with your shift and kind of smooth that out so you can get very nice build up with clay build up and damien standard in conjunction with each other another really useful one is this move brush in fact it's so useful i'm going to make it a quick uh, hockey. So I'm going to go into my brush menu here. I'm going to hold down Control Alt, tap my move. I'm going to do Alt W, and that'll be my move brush. So I've got standard brush, clay brush, move brush ready to go. So with my move brush, what that's going to do is allow me to pull these polygons in any direction. And brush size come in, comes into play a lot when you're using the move brush. So if I hold down Shift and smooth this area out, if I want to pull out just a small area, like give them a little pair of horns, I can make my brush size very small. If I make my brush size humongous, uh, I can move entire sections of his head around. So in this case, he's he's kind of got a flat thing going on here. There's no real draft to his face. So just really quickly, if I want to give him some a little bit more natural draft, I can just pull his face out, or I can pull the sides of his face back with a large move brush. And already, I mean, he's not going to look that natural, but he's going to look more natural than he did just kind of having his face sculpted. So you can go in here with your move brush and make your brush size bigger, smaller, navigate around, just kind of push and pull these things out. If you want to change his nose shape, just get a small move brush or you can get a large move brush, just make your brush size bigger and pull his whole face out or make it smaller and just pull out areas of his nose, kind of reshape that stuff. And just really quickly before we get too far, I want to talk about a little bit more in depth on the brush settings here. So one thing we didn't talk about is a focal shift. Uh, that focal shift is if you see on this cursor here, there's a big outside circle and a smaller inside circle. That's basically the fall off of your brush here. So if I go soft to large, as a nice even fall off. If I crank that focal shift to negative 100, you're going to see as I move that to the left, that inside circle starts hitting that outside circle. That's going to give me a very uh, the fall off is it, it's not broad. It's not going from a small to a large. It's basically right there at the edge. So you're going to see that's how that brush is going to behave now, the standard brush. Um, if I crank it up to a very high number, that's going as and you know as I crank that up, that s small circle gets smaller and smaller. That's going to have a very broad fall off. So it's going to go from a pinpoint to a very broad stroke. And generally speaking, you're probably going to want to leave that. Um, at its default. There's a couple edge cases when we get into masks where focal shift will come into play, but for now your focal shift is controlled by O. So if you tap the O key, you can do your focal shift, or of course you can right click and do your focal shift or space bar and do your focal shift. Our Z intensity, I usually just hop up here for Z intensity, but that's U. So you can do the U key and change your Z intensity. So you make that more or less. And my personal favorite is just to tap S for my draw size, but you can also do kind of the Photoshop brackets. You can do open bracket, 
then close bracket to kind of just step your draw size up and down. And one thing I didn't even mention because it's on by default is symmetry. So you're going to notice as we're sculpting, obviously, uh, it's sculpting in symmetry. And there's a lot of super cool stuff you can do with symmetry, aside from the fact that it just saves you time. If I'm sculpting a face that's vaguely symmetrical, go ahead and have symmetry on. And that way, you know, that's that's part of one of the more tedious things uh, in traditional sculpting is trying to get symmetry. Uh, and that's basically free in ZBrush. 